the sports world, how will they all fit in? It's something we kind of previewed back in March with John Arand. He is back with us now as we have a better understanding of what the sports landscape looks like. John, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We're all good. And uh, I know we had kind of touched on this yeah, about a month or two ago when sports kind of hit the pause button. But now that they're kind of unpausing and we're getting some dates here, um, I'm very intrigued, I think, as many are, of what the fall might look like on the television screen when you have the NBA, the NHL, a football game, uh, all crossing paths at the same time. Are the television networks equally as intrigued by this? Oh, yeah. Well, it's going to be great for the networks that have had nothing, uh, no live sports at all uh, to, to speak of. And um, but for the fans, it's going to be especially good. I mean, it, it, it's just going to be a bonanza of of live sports, which is uh, which is going to be uh, great. I mean, the only uh, potential problems uh, will be with the networks from a business side, where when you have too many events at, at one time, instead of being spread spread across twelve months, now they're really going to be crammed into think of it late September, early October. You're going to have the NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs, college and NFL uh, football. Um, you could potentially, hopefully, uh, you know, the, the World Series or baseball playoffs playing. And all of a sudden, like, you have these really primo properties, triple crown, golf majors as well, uh, that would command a lot of money in terms of ad sales and, uh, and certainly get big ratings. But when you have too many of them going against each other, the individual ratings are certain to come down. The ad sales are certain to come down a, a little bit. But right now, that's a, a problem that all the networks are thrilled, thrilled to have. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt that it's a good problem to have. But I kind of look at it in a way of it does seem like there's too much. I mean, there's going to be too many events on. What about the analysts, the play-by-play -play crews? I mean, if you're used to having an A team on something, now you might have the B or C team on that game, and it's on maybe CBS Sports Channel instead of CBS itself. Well, what happens – yeah, think about that. What happens on CBS when you have the Masters – going up with uh, the SEC college football, going up with the NFL. They've never had to make this decision before, and those are three primo partners for, for CBS. They don't want to upset any of them. Somebody's going to have to get upset and go to another Viacom-owned channel, like it, be it uh, CBS Sports Network or w one of the Viacom channels that, that, that they own too. That's going to be, from, from, a, from a media standpoint, that's going to be a really, really interesting and, and fun um, uh, characterization or watch now if if the masters was one that had to go to a different channel do you think that there's enough golf fans out there do you think that there would be enough support for any of these events that get moved to the point where it might not matter like golf fans will be golf fans and they will find their way to the masters over any sec event nobody knows uh that, I, that that's going to be really interesting to see typically is in april right when I see the Masters and you see the azaleas and you see the beautiful green fairways, that is a, the start of spring. All of a sudden, you take that and you plop it right into October. How is that going to have a different feel? What's that gonna, certainly the azaleas are going to be blooming, right? Huh. I'm, I'm not a horticulturalist, but I, I think that's right. Um, the, the fairways might not be quite as green. It, will it still have the same feel that the Masters have? And, and will that be enough to, to keep a – the, the, the viewers coming over. I mean, nobody knows the answers to that. And, and th those are some of the questions that are out there. And John, I mean, you mentioned, you know, what do you do on Saturday at three 30 with an SEC, Alabama, whoever up against the masters? I mean, how do you make the right or wrong decision in that? Which is a more powerful property? I know the SEC is leaving CBS. So they just kind of say, yeah, we don't care if you're mad at us. You're out of here. We're putting the masters on, and the big SEC game of the weekend is going to go someplace else? You know, it's funny that I actually, off the top of my head, brought up the Masters and, and the SEC. The SEC has already told, uh, given a finger to, to CBS pretty much and said it's leaving to, to go to, to ESPN. Right. So I, I know what's going to happen on Saturday. You can pretty much sure that they're going to want to continue with the Masters. And what the NFL did was if, if you take a look at the schedule they put out, the CBS game, they're going to have the 1 p.m. game. On, on Sunday, which which will end around four. Typically on Sunday, they would start the Masters at three thirty. And so I, I think that you know that 
everybody's going to have to give and take a little bit. It's not going to start at 3.30, but I think that in that one instance, uh, that's my, that, that, that looks like what the network and what the, uh, the leagues are going to be doing. This could totally be a crazy scenario and a crazy question, but, I mean, what isn't crazy at this point? Is it possible that maybe they start selling games to other networks if they think that they have something better already? Like, we just have too much on our plate. Maybe we can sell this and move pieces around a bit. I don't know. Uh, that's entirely possible. The games have been sub-licensed uh, before. And the, the problem is, where are you going to sub-license it to? Because we, we talked about you know the Masters and the SEC, and then you go over to NBC, they, they're going to be chock in, in a perfect world, they're going to be chock full of uh, events as well. I mean, so where where would you go? Uh, you know, ABC, the, the same problem. Um, and, and again, it's a good problem to have. So people, uh, you can expect to see ratings uh, go down for individual sports, but I expect overall television uh, uh, viewership, if you add everything together, is, is going to be huge. Uh, John Aran, Sports Business Journal, uh, taking a look at what could happen when sports returns. Now, well, there's a scenario where Game 7 of the NBA Finals could be on uh, a Monday night. I don't know if ESPN or, or TNT has the property this year, but if that's an ESPN game, they're up against their own Monday night football. I mean, that could be another interesting scenario, even if it's not. You're going to have a TV night, a Game 7 of the Finals, up against a Monday night football game. We already see that the NBA draft is going to be up against a Thursday night football game. Yeah, and, and, and so there are a couple of things in play. One is the NFL rule, rules overall. So the NFL will will win out in all these cases, especially if you consider that the NFL media rights deal is being negotiated now. Everybody is desperate to keep the NFL, and so they're going to count out of whatever the NFL wants to do. So everything sort of maneuvers off of that. And I, I, can, I, I would bet that, ABC and Monday Night Football would be on ESPN. If Game Seven happens, that would be on ABC. Uh, ESPN Two is in as many homes as ESPN, so that, 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 that's an acceptable place to also put some uh, uh, put a game as well. But and certainly not a Game Seven. How is the NBA? Do we have an idea of what that's going to look like? I mean, I've read that they're going to be playing about five, six, seven games a day. I mean, are they going to be spread out through like? The afternoon? Are they going to be incongruent? Do you have an idea of what that's going to look like? I mean, they, they are certainly going to have games in prime time because that's exactly what the TV networks want. So uh, I would imagine that they're going to have to start some games uh, early uh, d- during the day. But the, again, for the for the viewer, I mean, what, the one complaint I hear about the NBA Finals every single year, and I hate it, is the amount of time that in, in between each game. You know, they take two, three, four days sometimes in, in between each game. I mean, they need to get this uh, these playoffs done early so that they can start the next season. So you, um, um, the expectation of uh, various media executives that I talk to is that they're going to play a Finals game, take one day off, play the next one, take one day off, play the next one, and then you're just going to be – get into a much better rhythm as a fan to, to watch that. Is there enough uh, ad dollars to go around for the fall? I mean, in other words, hey, I usually buy you NBA, but now you're going to be in the fall, so I'm going to have to spend my ad dollars with the NFL. I'm sorry. I mean, is that a concern for these leagues that are restarting that are hoping to make money uh, other ways with no fans in the stands? Totally. I mean, if you're buying ads right now, you, the, this is a great situation. You have a glut of programming. So all of a sudden, if the NFL is too high, uh, you know, I'm going to t- I'll take that and I'll just put it on, you know, the NBA, which will get a lot, of, get get a lot, or I'll put it on the NHL playoffs or college football or or, or any of the majors. So the, for for advertisers, this is going to be fantastic. For for the individual networks, uh, you know, they, they they realize they just want the sports back. They realize the ad dollars aren't going to be what what uh, they, they uh, had been in the past, and they uh, they understand that this whole recovery for them is not like a six month process. This is a couple year process to where you know they can finally get whole and get advertising and, and, and schedules back to where uh, where they want them to be. Yeah, and I'm wondering, uh, John, how much uh, the networks are uh, excited by um numbers that have been out with uh you know other sports like NASCAR the match the other day uh the UFC stuff that ESPN has like just seeing what the numbers are 
for sports without the other sports, they have to be very excited about what they might look like when sports comes back. You know, they are excited about it. I think that the the numbers so far for TV viewership have been good. But you know, there are some concerning signs. Some of the, the, the NASCAR numbers have come back. and uh, they, they don't know whether, uh, in terms of being a TV product, will people really want to watch games with nobody in the stands? I mean, it's part of watching these games is, you know, seeing the raucous crowd or hearing like, a, you know, if somebody wins on the road, hearing a raucous crowd all of a sudden you get quiet. Um, nobody, nobody knows how that's going to play out. And the other big question is, like, just think about uh, your your own families in quarantine. Mine, everybody's binging Netflix or Hulu or, you know, all, all these different uh, areas. People are figuring out how to live without live sports right now. And they want they, – they know the hardcore fans are going to come back. No problem. Certainly anybody listening to, to, to your station is going to come back. They need the casual fans to come back. And if the casual fans have taken a four- or five-month respite from, from watching sports – Will they come back right away? That's a big question that they have. Uh, John Rn from the Sports Business Journal, and uh, very intriguing stuff at Rn underscore SBJ. Uh, the NBA, by the way, eighty-eight regular season games. Uh, we'll see how that slate all pops out. Uh, one thing I do want to ask you about is obviously um, the, the stuff with Breeze. I mean, he is getting hammered over the last couple of days, and he has already signed a deal to be – what? What what is the deal with NBC for him? Is, is he going to be a part of the Sunday night football team, or they just signed him and they don't know what they're going to do with him? Do you think this could affect that down the road? Uh, I don't think this will affect that down the road. I think that, that they – he – NBC believes that he's going to be really good on television, and and they want to bring him on. Um, so the, the, again, the NFL they have a new rights deal coming up. So right now, NBC has Sunday Night. Will they get another package? Will they will they bid it? Like suppose NBC decides they want to get the Thursday Night package and 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 bring that. Could Breeze do that potentially? Could they put Breeze in the studio? One thing that I was told, Chris Collinsworth is going nowhere. They love him. Uh, and and, and uh, they want to have him uh, set for long term. So this wasn't a move to try to push Chris Collins without. But no, nobody knows how these packages are going to are, are going to look, and whether NBC is going to have two packages or just the one uh, going forward. But uh, they, they 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 will they will stick with Drew Brees. They're not going to they're not going to turn on him regardless of what what happened this week. Speaking of crews, what about the Monday night football crew? I mean, they're getting a new one. How much impact do you think that will have on viewership, or do you think not much will change? Uh, you, you know, I, I don't think it'll have any impact on viewership. I, I, I hate to say this to, to, to you guys and for me, but nobody nobody watches for us, for, for us right? Or nobody. It, it's. Uh, it, I don't think that there's any uh, announcer anywhere that has moved the ratings needle. That does it. And if you take a look at the Monday night schedule that the NFL put out, they have some great games. And people are going to watch those games if it's Joe Testor and Booger McFarlane or if it's Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth. It, it really doesn't matter. I think where you see somebody move the ratings needle is when – yeah, I'm going to sound like an old guy now, but when you had somebody like John Madden come on – if it was a bad game, he would keep people watching it because he'd be entertaining. But even even Madden, I don't think anybody would have tuned into those old like Cowboy 49ers games or whatever. Actually, like Billy, I should say the Eagles uh, Giants games just to, to just hear John Madden. They, they wanted to see the game. Uh, John R. in for the Sports Business Journal. Uh, looking forward to uh, how this all uh, maps together. By the way, we haven't even, we didn't even, we didn't even fit where uh, hockey's place might be in here. We got to put a little piece of the puzzle uh, for the NHL playoffs when they resume too, uh, and, and their little uh, fight to try to get viewership. This should be fun. There's going to be a lot happening, and uh, we'll keep our eye on it. John, we appreciate the time as always, pal. See, there's too much stuff, man. I love talking about this. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. We'll uh, fit them in again as we get more information.